coming to Bosnia. Thank you. So this bridge right here is 27 meters high, 400 years old. It's been destroyed and rebuilt. The most our diving club jumps off of it. Uh, we're gonna go in the dive club and I'm, I'm gonna jump. It's pretty high. Yeah, come on! <laughs> There's not a whole lot that I knew about Bosnia before going there, other than they had the Olympics in the 80s, and then not long after that, in the early 90s, they had a war that was going on. When we got to the city of Sarajevo, you could see just remnants everywhere that this place did have a major military conflict not long ago. Nearly every building has bullet marks all over it. And I mean, you can almost tell what the newer buildings are just because they're not littered with bullet holes. up to the bobsled track. It was ridiculous. Expansion gaps could swallow your wheel. Big holes cut in it where they would just hang out and snipe people. There's caution tape for landmines all around. We're just barely starting to kind of test the waters on the lower part of the bobsled track. And the Turkish national team came out there and they're training for the Olympics. They kind of had priority over us. It feels so wonderful to travel thousands and thousands of miles just to be kicked out of another spot because we're skateboarding. So we just respected them and let them do their thing. We asked them when they were done and it was only gonna be an hour or two. So we went and had some lunch and then came back. Major kudos to anybody that has ever bombed down a bobsled track because it is absolutely terrifying. It was one of the scariest things I think I've ever skated. No room for error. You're going forwards and you're hoping you're not hitting the wall and you're managing these corners one way or another. It's fast. So at the end of the day, Farouk's friends on their mountain bikes come hauling ass down this track and get way higher on the wall than, I, don't, I can't even see bobsled getting that high on the wall. So they rode down, you know, we're just hanging out at the bottom and the Dean's like, okay, normally we do a run and we go to bar and have one beer. I was like, great, that sounds cool. But you know, truthfully, like we're probably gonna have two. Every ride we go to take a beer. Yeah. So yeah. you can do, go with us and we can uh, how, about, how about we take two beers? Uh, <laughs> what about three? Mm, let's do three. Let's As a matter of fact, we, every time we get drunk. <laughs> Let's have no, one, no. then there's a lot of Two, three, four, five. <laughs> Spent two nights in Sarajevo, took off from there to make our way to Romania. We had to pass through multiple borders. Driving through Serbia, we saw some more destruction from the war. Towers that are bombed and that have injured who knows how much damage that are still standing there, that are monuments of what has happened. Welcome to Romania. Yeah. Yeah. I translated it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was told that the guy to get in touch with in Romania was Sergiu, who lives in Brasov. He seemed stoked to kind of like help us out in our time in Romania and show us around. Thank God we met up with him because Romania is a very interesting country and it had been very difficult for us to get around on our own. The community in Romania was pretty small at the beginning, but every year we are getting bigger and bigger. We are like 2,000 longboarders right now. The biggest community is in Brasov. 
because we have so many downhill roads there. All the, all the community is very happy to meet them at the skate shop. A really beautiful city that surrounded by really tall forested mountains. It's just a really nice town to spend some time in. Romania is uh, pretty spread out in a lot of ways. There's some major cities, but the second you get outside those big cities, it's farmland where people have a horse and buggy. There's little gypsy camps everywhere. These very kind of simple sort of farmland. We decided we'll go check out Transfergation, which is the second highest paved road in Romania. As we're driving up the Transfergation, we start to realize that it's raining, so you get higher elevations and the roads can be soaked. Look out the window and just see this amazing road that starts above the clouds and winds down this huge mountain. And you know, I mean, the road is rough. We've been sitting in the car for I don't know how many days not skating. It doesn't matter if you're full bombing or doing whatever. It's like, it just feels good to kind of stand on your board and roll down something. It wasn't the best ride I've ever had on my skateboard, but it's kind of neat to think that you took your skateboard down the side of a mountain in the middle of nowhere in Romania. A salt mine. Uh, we're 200 meters underneath the ground in these epic caverns. The size of this place is absolutely mind blowing. And the fact that we can skateboard here is even cooler. <laughs> we're gonna lick the wall and we're gonna taste some fresh salt right from the source. It's delicious. <laughs> After the salt mine, we headed back up to the van, which we parked right beside a ditch, so we stopped there. And a couple little local kids came out and started trying to skate on their little skateboard. It was so bad. The nose and tail were basically gone. So after our session, Billy hooked the kid up with a pretty much new logo. And then we just get swarmed. Our whole van gets swarmed by like 10 kids, this whole soccer team. And we threw them all a t-shirt and got out of there before the other team started running over. <laughs> Hopefully there's a, a skate and explore soccer team somewhere in Romania. <laughs> Since the weather was starting to dry up, we knew it was going to be a good time to cruise out to Transalpina, which is, I believe, the highest paved road in Romania. It looks amazing. It's a perfect blacktop with like multiple sections. You could skate it all day and skate different sections and never get bored. It's one of the best roads I've skated. It's amazing.
Filipina. It's technically closed because they never finished it. They're still missing guardrails. There were still cars up there. And Some of the few people that were driving up during the day were construction crews that were there just to put in the guardrails. very highest point we saw a group of these like little huts where they're selling some souvenir stuff out of and one of the souvenirs they're selling was this drink called palinka which as far as I can tell is basically gypsy moonshine I bought mine from this big Romanian guy he's pretty cool I don't know if I taste the lemon or not but I definitely can taste the drunk when I drink that like one of those things you do a Google image search and you find photos of that and you just you have to add that to your list of roads that you want to escape before you die because it's the setting the style of road the paving it's perfect there's no other way to describe it you need a picture of this Here. Uh, uh, 